In this video, I'm going to go over PowerPoint 2010. As soon as you open PowerPoint 2010, this is what you will see. On the very top, you'll see these menus like File, Home, Insert, Design, and those are also referred to as the tabs of the Office ribbon. In Office 2007 and 2010, the Office ribbon was one of the new features that was added. And particularly in Office 2010, the file option was added again to the application. Notice under Office 2010 here or in PowerPoint 2010, we also have the options are under the file drop down. The different tabs here in the ribbon, they contain different sets or groupings of functions or commands. And the idea is that uh, the most commonly used functions and commands are located in the Home tab. And then as you make progress in your presentation, then you go and use the other tabs, such as for inserting components, you go under the Insert tab. But then if you're going to change the design of your presentation, you go under the Design tab. As you go through this, these tabs, notice that there are different sections and groupings together. And under each grouping here, you can even expand it further and it will show you a dialog box. For example, for formatting text, you can click on this expansion icon here in the bottom right of the section. And then it will display further options. On the left hand side, this is where you'll see a preview of the different slides. For example, here is a slideshow with multiple slides here. So you have a preview of all the different slides. On the right hand side, this is where the actual slide will be displayed. Right below the slide, for each specific one, you'll have a section where you can enter notes. And the entering the notes comes in handy if you're going to do a presentation in front of a large group and you want to write down specific details that you do not want to present to the audience. Those notes, you can print them out on paper and hold on to them. Or there is an option to use multiple monitor displays when you're presenting it. And you can use what's called the presenter view. That shows the full screen for the audience. So the audience just sees this, your slides. But for you yourself, you can have a, a small preview of the PowerPoint itself or the slide itself along with the notes. So on the very left hand side here on the bottom, you have then the number of slides in this particular slideshow, what type of design you're using, and as far as the theme, and then you have the different views. So this, for example, here is the normal view. The next one over, it's the slide sorter view. So this is the slide sorter view. The slide sorter allows you to rearrange your slides so you don't have to copy and paste them. You can just move them from one end, uh, from one area to the other. So all you have to do is basically click on it and then you should be able to just drag it over. And then finally here on the far right hand side, you have the slideshow. This is how you can start your slideshow to present it to the audience. This will start from the option number or from the very first slide in your slideshow. Another way is to start the slideshow is by pressing F5 key or by clicking on slideshow and then choose from the beginning or from the current slot. Let's go back to normal view here. And I'll explain one more thing before we get started with how to create a presentation from scratch. So notice on the normal view, like I said earlier, we have the different previews for each slide. However, there is also this outline option here. And the outline, this is, and this is what I'd recommend, is that you create your presentation, your slideshow presentation in the outline mode first, because it is very easy to get stuck with different choosing colors or themes or modifying the formatting and the text and so on. And you have not gotten very far with your presentation. So it's best to do the outline first. And if you're going to choose to do the outline first, the easy way is to go under the outline tab here. And of course, you can insert a slide by just, for example, 
that's our first slide by just simply typing the text here and of course you can insert a new slide by clicking on new slide and you choose the type of new slide that you want to insert however the easier way to do it is to go under the outline mode and once we insert the first slide control enter so control enter will insert a new slide and then you can either click here to get to the bullet list or if you are directly on this area here you can do control enter and it will enter the bullets now if we want to insert a new slide of course we could use the drop down here from the home tab or we could do control m or we can do actually control enter control enter again control enter will insert a new slide so you get the idea the easy way to do this is to just do the outline first go through the whole outline and create the text and then you can go back to slides here and you have something to show for yourself so at this point we could press f5 to present it or we could press slideshow here and we're ready to present it so that's one of the ways to get started here with our slideshow and these are the different components on using powerpoint 2010. In this video, it is assumed that you know what the different components of a PowerPoint 2010 application are and what, how to navigate between all the different tabs here. Also, it is assumed that you know how to create a basic slide. The basic idea is that you do the outline first, go and fill out the outline first, and then you can go and customize it. So we are at that point of customizing the presentation just in case you have not referred to the previous tutorial to create a new slide you simply go to wherever you want to insert a new slide and then you click on new slide here and choose the type of slide that you want to insert notice as you are inserting a new slide you can also choose to duplicate current slides or you can use reuse slides so if you have a powerpoint from another time that you have put together you can bring and reuse those slides by clicking on this option and for the sake of time i'm not going to click on that at this point but that's how and where that option is so in our case if we wanted to just include a new slide we simply click on title and content this is the most common one and then we can put a title here of course you could do this from the outline so now let's assume that this is our outline for our powerpoint and now we want to customize this and improve on it so to customize this further the first step that i'd recommend that you do is to go under the design tab and then apply one of the other designs here notice in uh, office 2007 2010 microsoft has put together a bunch of themes to make things easier and those themes notice there's a drop down here where you can choose whatever choice that you want so let's uh, choose this temporarily and notice that all the slides in our slideshow have changed at this point so the easiest even if you just created an outline to start with and just apply a basic design you still have something to show at this point and notice it was with one single click if you do not like these color choices you can also choose to customize the design further and you can go under colors here and choose a different color scheme this is going to customize things accordingly automatically you can also change the fonts type of font for all the slides in your slideshow and then the effects you can also customize the background as to what the background is going to look like it is recommended as in the guidelines that you use a whitish background with a nice design one other tip here as we are working with PowerPoint, if there is um, an option or something that you're constantly utilizing, you can always add this function from within one of those tabs to the quick access toolbar here on the top. And the way you add something in there is by simply right clicking on it and choose to add gallery to quick access toolbar. In that way, the gallery will always show up 
automatically here. And it will be easier to access. Now that you change the design, again, you can change the designs for a single slide here or for all the slides. If I want only a specific slide to be changed, you can right click on that slide or, or actually if you go here under the drop down, you can right click on a design and choose to apply it to selected slides. So that's how you can choose a specific theme for a specific slide. So I'm going to do one that is very completely different here, so I'll apply it to selected slides. So notice the other slides are a different type and this one is different here. If you want multiple slides to be applying the same theme, you'd simply select more than one, hold down the control key and click on multiple slides, and then go and pick a theme, right click on the theme and choose apply to all selected slides. And notice just these two slides are different at this point. I'm going to undo this and this is where the function for undoing it is you press back and that will undo any of the changes that you have done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of those themes that we use here at Cairn and I'm going to apply this to all the slides in the selected slideshow. And now that has been changed. So, so far we learned how to add a new slide and also how to apply different designs to specific slides or all the slides in the slideshow and also customize the design somewhat. Before I finish on this section, if you like a specific design and you want to set that as a default for all the slides or you want to save it here under the designs, the way you do that is that once you have customized that specific uh, design to your liking like this one then you can click on the drop down here and choose to save the current theme so once you choose to save the current theme you can give it give it a name save it and then once it is saved it should show up under custom here and it should say test favorite theme or whatever you named it once you have it listed you can also set it as a default theme. So anytime you're creating a new slideshow, you can apply that specific design automatically. And this is how it works. You click on File, click on New, and as soon as you click on Blank Presentation, you will always get this favorite design that you have. So this should save you some time overall. At this point in our video, we're going to go further on and insert different components to customize our PowerPoint. So once you have created slides here, you can change the formatting. This is on the Home tab. This is where the basic functions are going to be listed, such as changing the font and changing colors of the font and indenting the text and inserting shapes and one key feature here is that before I move on to something else here under quick styles under drawing here you can pick predefined styles on formatting certain sections of your presentation so now let's assume that you know how to create to add the new slides and we know also how to change the design of it now also you can change what's called the layout of the slides and you can have two, two content slides. So it's basically going to split the slide in half and have like multimedia content on the right or just the bullets on the left here. And notice there are comparison, comparison slides, are blank. So you change this according to your liking. But the common one is the title with content. Inserting graphics. And I have designed our slideshow here so that we actually have the different components that I'm talking about as I'm going through the tutorial. But usually you'd have a topic and you're covering the main aspects of the topic using PowerPoint. So inserting stuff or inserting other components in our presentation. So to do that, you'd go under the Insert tab and notice you can insert tables, you can insert pictures, clip art, and all kinds of other stuff. So the most common one would be probably graphics or images from the web. And the easiest probably would be 
to just Google something. However, be cautious of copyrights for images and other components you get from the web. We'll assume here that uh, things are good. So we'll go, for example, let's say we go to the website and then we'll copy something from here. So let's say we want to copy this image. We right click on the image, choose copy image, and I'm using Google Chrome in this case. And then you'll go into your slide and then press paste. Notice in this case it's going to paste it somewhere in your slide, but you can uh, drag it by holding the mouse and then resizing it to how you'd like to resize it. If you'd like to crop this, notice uh, by the way, this on the very top here, it comes up with uh, picture tools because we are working with a picture. It gives us the picture tools, and this is what's referred to as the contextual tools. It's tools that the program gives to us or provides for us in the context of what we are doing. So if we were to click on the image here, note it, and I'm double clicking actually on an image, it will give us a new set of tools on this part of the ribbon here. So we could remove the background, we could change the color, we don't have to be a graphics artist to change the design of this thing. We simply use a theme. If you wanted to crop this, you click on crop here on the top and then resize this to your liking. I guess I dragged it, but that's how you do it. Okay, so that's how you insert images. You could insert also clip art. So if you click on insert under clip art, and then it'll search, for example, uh, web. This will go online and uh, bring us different images or clip art from the internet. Click on it and then move it to where you want to. Then resize it the way you'd like. And again, the tools, the contextual tools are available just like for the images. The next thing here, we are going to go to insert pictures. So pictures are very similar. You just browse the pictures a folder in your local drive. So if I click on picture and then go under, let's say there's this image on my computer here, where you could go to your pictures folder, wherever you keep your pictures. Just double click on it, drag it to wherever you want. Resize it, again, the same tools. Other things that you can insert are shapes. So if you click here under insert, and then we go under shapes, and this comes in handy if you wanted to illustrate certain components and you have animations, for example, um, an arrow or something getting animated. The difference here for shapes is that you'd have to hold down the mouse, and this is common for Microsoft Word or other Windows applications here. You hold down the mouse, and then drag it as to however big you want to make this shape. Notice there's a green button here, and you can resize or redirect it, change the direction of that arrow to how you prefer it. So that's the green button here. Once you resize it, now notice that there is also a drawing tools tab, and this again is the contextual tools. So if you double click on it, it gives you a whole bunch of options on modifying and working with this specific item. So now notice if we wanted to change the color or change it to a different template, we can very simply by simply choosing one of those themes. So that was uh, shapes. The next one is inserting hyperlinks. So hyperly, you can hyperlink pretty much anything. It could be text in your slideshow, it could be an image, or it could be clip art. So if I wanted to hyperlink text, and hyperlinking is basically, so when you're presenting something, you'll click on that item and it will redirect you to either open a document or open a website out there. So what you need to do is you'd need to first where you want to hyperlink. So let's say I want to, as soon as I click on this item, I want to go to CNN.com. So in this case, I select hyperlinks and then under the insert tab, I click on hyperlink and then type here http cnn.com. This could be a YouTube video, it could be whatever you want out there on the web, you just copy the URL and then you paste it under the address. Click OK. Now this item is hyperlinked and if I were to present this to put it in presentation mode by clicking here under slideshow or clicking under the slideshow up here and choosing to display it or pressing F5, 
When I'm presenting, I click on hyperlink that will take me there. Same thing here. I can hyperlink this item by simply clicking on hyperlink. And let's say I want to go to http to cnet.com. And that is hyperlink. Now, for images, you don't really know whether it's hyperlinked unless you have, um, you know, beforehand, basically. So now, if I were to present this, this is how it will display. And if I were to click on this image or on the hyperlink here in the bottom, it'll take me to that specific site. Press escape to get out of that mode, and then we are back. Other components that you can insert here are sound clips. And the sound clips come in handy if you're doing a presentation where you're not necessarily narrating something yourself live, but you want to just have a bunch of pictures or something continuously going. You can have sound in the background, or you can have sound for a specific slide, specific components within the slide. So to insert a sound clip, all you'd need to do is uh, go under Insert, and then under Audio, you click Sound from File. So Sound from File, it will be basically an MP3 file or some kind of file that you have somewhere stored on your computer. Now that you inserted the sound file, uh, you can click on playback options and then you can choose to loop it until it stops but this will start this sound file will start as soon as you click on the item by default if you want it to start automatically you'll need to change it uh, here where it says start on click you need to change it to play automatically if you wanted this sound file or this song to play throughout all the slides in the slideshow then you'd need to choose play across all slides. And notice there are further options here as well that you could rewind it, you could hide the icon so that you don't get to see it when you're presenting it and so on. But that's how you insert a sound file in your presentation. Next, we're gonna to go to inserting a movie clip. Uh, most of the movies uh, clips or so on are from YouTube nowadays and somewhere on the web, so you can simply use the hyperlink feature for those. However, if you have recorded a, a movie clip with your smartphone or something of that nature, and you have it somewhere in your hard drive, you can uh, go under the Insert tab, then under Video, and then choose Video from File. From Video from File, then you go under wherever you have your video, And here is, for example, a sample video. You click, you select it, click on insert, and then it's going to size it accordingly here. However, you can resize it to make it bigger. So here is um, our video. And notice again under playback, now we have the video tools. So under playback, you can change this so that it will start automatically or you, when you click on it. Notice you can also do a preview of it by either clicking under play over here or under the control bar on the very top bottom. And that's how it's going to display. Let's move on to another component that you can insert in your slideshow, and this would be the Smart Art. Smart Art actually is pretty cool in Office 2010 and 2007. So, uh, Smart Art basically, if you want to illustrate a concept, instead of you putting three bullets here, for example, in order to get um, A in a course, you need to study, attend, homework. And then the result, you'd say it's an A. Instead of demonstrating this concept this way through bullets, like we traditionally do, you can insert what's called Smart Art. So to insert Smart Art, you go under Insert, you go under Smart Art, and then you pick one of those designs from here, whichever makes sense for you. So in this uh, case, probably what would work for us is one of those processes here. And I'll pick specifically this one. 
Now notice as you're working with smart art here, notice you have the area here to type the text. So you simply have to type the text for these components. So you say study or attend, study, homework, and note that this is more meaningful than just simply having a bunch of items here or bullets. Now notice as you're working with smart art, if you double click on it, Notice now you have the smart tools, smart art tools, and then this is where you can change the different colors and the color theme. You can change the actual design. So if you're not happy with this specific design, you can change it to a different one. So it's more visual. It's intended to be more visual. If you delete this, uh, or if you close the little window, notice that on those corners here, there is um, this little triangle. This is how you can bring those menus back up. So if you want it on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side, depending on what you have space, it will show up accordingly. Now these designs are specific to that design, so you can't keep on adding components here. So if I wanted to add a fifth one, notice that the other ones get deactivated. So it's designed to have only a certain number of them. Another very nice feature is um, actually converting, and this is where it could come in very handy for you, is you can convert, let's say I have these three bullets here, or these items you can convert these bullets into smart art. So you basically can take any slides and you can convert them to smart art. And the option is here under the paragraph option, or you can simply right click on the slide and choose convert to smart art, and then pick one of those items. So notice we didn't have to do anything fancy. It's customized it automatically by simply picking the design. Of course, these colors, you can change them, you can change the shapes, you can customize this further. So let's say this component in the background here, or one of those boxes, I wanted a different color. You can simply go and change it and customize it yourself by clicking on it, and then going on format, and then changing it to whatever you want. So that's basically a smart art, and it's a very powerful tool. other things that you can insert in your PowerPoint are tables as well as charts. So inserting tables. By the way, you can insert tables or these components directly from here as well, depending on the type of slide that you have chosen. So if I want to click on insert table or under insert and then tables. Under tables, pick however you, items you want in that table and it has been inserted. Now you can just add, just like in a Word table or another program table, it's nothing extra here. The only thing to remember is that as you're customizing the tables, you can use styles. Again, save yourself time on utilizing styles here. And if you want to customize the colors accordingly and uh, make it uh, with shadow or reflection or customize it even further, this is actually the best way to learn about it is by just tinkering with all of these different options that you see here. And that's the best way to learn. It's going to be impossible for me to cover everything here. Notice under the tables, there's also the layout tab. So this is under contextual tools. You have two options. And under the layout tab, you can insert a row below or to the left or above it and customize the table as you need. You can change the indentation. You can also change the height of it, send it to the background, and so on. Under the design tab, keep in mind that you can also have the total rows. So if you wanted to keep cal to do calculations, kind of basic calculations, you can customize that. And you can choose to have one of them as the first column, and so on. Another one that you might use, especially in the business world, is uh, using charts. And charts are kind of used in conjunction with, ex with Excel. So the charts are used to illustrate and compare data. 
It can be a pie chart, line chart, surface chart, all kinds of charts, just like uh, those that you use in Microsoft Excel. So to insert a chart, you would simply click on insert and then chart, and then pick what type of chart you want. So that's uh, for the sake of simplicity here, we click on column chart, basic one, and then click OK. And at this point, it is going to open Excel and it's going to give you our sam uh, us our sample data. So whatever is within this blue line here, that's what's going to be represented in our chart. If we do not want something here, then we just leave out leave it out of the blue line. If you want to change those, so we say quarter two, quarter three, and so on, we can change that as well. So let's assume that these are changed to what we need them to be. And then we close Excel at this point. And notice the data has been represented and put in our, in our chart here in PowerPoint. For the sake of cleaning this out, I'm going to delete this table from before. And then, of course, you can resize this chart to what you want it. You can customize it further by going under the... Yeah. So we resize it. Make sure you choose the actual chart, and that's where my problem was here a moment ago. And notice there are three tabs now for charts. So you can change the design of the chart, to pick a different color set or theme here. Then we can change the, the layout of the chart as to where stuff appears, or where the legend and the different components of the chart appears, whether we want the data. And then under the layout, this is where the legend can appear, the axis, and the data table, whether you want the data table or not. So if we wanted to show the data table, we just pick this data table option and it will be displayed right below the chart with the actual numbers. So the idea here is, because uh, I'll not be able to go through all the different components of the charts here, it would be uh, time, quite time consuming. The idea is that now that you know how to insert a chart, just click on the actual items within the contextual tools. Notice contextual tools here, and then pick what you want to change from the contextual tools. So basically play with the different options here available for the charts. The next concept that I'll cover here in PowerPoint is using animations. And here's how that works. So basically we go here under animations and uh, for example, this slide right now does not have any animations. So if I wanted to insert animations, I could uh, choose one of those options so that how it will appear. So if I wanted to insert an animation, I click on add animation. So I pick a component first and I click on add animation and then pick how I want that animation to show up. So in this case, I'll choose to fly in. So the bullets at this point, they will fly in. Now, one other thing to do as well, is, which is helpful, is to reveal this animation pane. So we click on animation pane, and it kind of tells us here as to what, or it shows what we options we have available, or what we have animated so far. So notice, so we have one, 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 these, this bundle here, this section, will all show up together. And we have this two, 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 all of these, that means that all of these, when we go to present it, they will show up together at the same time. So here's how it will come up so far. Those three together, the image. Now what about if we wanted to change those so that they came separately? So to change that, we need to click here. So notice we have this section right here. And under the animation pane, we have this drop down under the animation. So we click on the drop down. And then notice the first one here, it's on click. The next one, it says it's with the previous. The next one, it says it's coming with the previous. That means it's going to come up with the same one that we have to click. So if we wanted to change this next one, the second right here, to come up separately, we click on the drop down and we choose to start on its own click. So now notice if I present this, 
click one, click two. Didn't take effect. And then this one, let's say on its own, click number three. So let's try this again. Click one, click two, click three. And the reason why this third one came up earlier together with number two, it was because it was set to start with the previous. So if I present it again, click one, click two, and three together. And then we have the next bunch. We need to change the next bunch. Let's say this last one to start on its own, change it on its own click, and then press to present it. So one, two, these two together, and there is one more by itself. So the key here was to show the animation pane and then expand it because by default it's going to show up, show up like this. Expand it and then customize it the way you want. Notice that you can change it so it starts in a different timing and you can change all kinds of other options in there as well. Notice you can preview it from here as well, how it's going to show up. Now, how do we animate the images? It's the same idea. So we click on the image or the component that we want to animate. Then we click on animation. Let's say we want to zoom into it. I don't recommend it usually, but for the sake of emphasis. And notice at this point, it's going to be number five. So it's going to play like that. Now, if I wanted the, this image to come up right after web here, I just simply drag it up and then notice it's going to be that the picture, then the rest of the text. Now, if I want the image to come up with the same, the same time as number one, I click on the picture here on the drop down and then choose start with the previous. Now, as soon as I present it here in a moment, from the web and these two, two computers, or this picture of the web, will show up at the same time. Or if I present it this way. So the idea here for animation is customize each component the way you want it. Remember, don't overdo it. And then move stuff up and down as needed. Same way it works for clip art, same idea. You click on add animation, fly in, and what direction. Now for smart art, you can animate smart art as well. And the smart art, it's basically the way you do that is by you select smart art here, like we have in this case. And actually, let me go for smart art to this one. Same idea, but just for emphasis. So you pick the whole object for smart art and then you choose add animation now we want this to appear i notice on animation i notice that one of the components here on animation for the smart art is that once we have it, the object selected and we have chosen to add animation there's also an effect options here under animation so you click on it and then you can have them come one at a time if i present it this is how it will show up one at a time. So unfortunately, probably it's not recording it here the whole screen, but you'll be able to see that each object here is coming separately. And again, the way you control that, you enable the animation and you choose the effect options right here as to how you want that to show up within the smart art. our animation for the smart art. Okay, so that's animation. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we, we are going to customize and work on changing what's called the slide master. So let's suppose that we wanted to add, like you see here in the bottom of each slide, 
I have a component called walk a different path. If you wanted to have in here uh, some other thing in the very bottom or on every slide, and have, instead of you going customizing and changing every single slide, you can change what's called the slide master. We can do that by going under view and then slide master. Under slide master, this is where we could change any type of component and it will be changed throughout all the slides in our slideshow. So let's say we want it here on the left, we want it to customize this by inserting a shape. And we want the shape to be very basic, so just to give it a different look to all the slides in our slideshow. If I wanted to change the color here, And then on the very bottom, let's say I want to insert a text box. And you want this to show up in all the slides. And of course, you can also change this bullet number. So let's customize it. So let's assume that you wanted to change the color of this bullet. Click on the drop down, go to bullets and numbering. And then let's say we want it bright red. Okay, notice that specific bullet has been changed. And let's say that we want it square. So you can go in, in a very refined way and modify all kinds of components throughout your slide master. Let's say that the title on every slide of the same kind, now keep in mind the same kind, it doesn't change it for every type of slide out there. You want to change it to italics. That's where you just simply select it, modify it. So any type of component that you customize in here, as soon as we save it, it's going to update it throughout all of our slides in the slideshow. This is referred to as customizing the slide master. So now that we are done with our changes here, we'll go under slide master and then we'll click on close master view. And notice, the gray that we added, it's in every slide, as well as the footer is in every slide as well. So that's how you change the slide master. Keep in mind, if you invest a lot of work on the slide master, you can always save the slide master as a default or as one of the themes here. And the way you save it is by simply going under the drop down, choose save as current theme, and then it will show up over here under custom slide, the uh, custom, and it's this one. If you want that as a default, you right click on it, choose set as the default. Another feature that you can use in PowerPoint is utilizing notes. So what you do is you go through each one of your slides and you add notes and facts uh, below the slide. And as you add the notes, uh, those can be used while presenting. You could print those out or you could use them in a dual screen monitor where the notes will be displayed on your own screen and then the audience will just see the presentation. So that is usually done by going to the slideshow after you have entered the notes. Here you go under slideshow and it's this use presenter view. So if you look in the lower portion of this little window here, it's kind of hard to see, but I cannot magnify it because of the recording here. You'd have the audience would have the PowerPoint where it says that bigger picture in the back, that is the PowerPoint and then that you as the viewer would have, or the presenter, you would have the notes along with a snapshot of each slide and also what's coming up, including a timer. This requires multiple monitors or a laptop with the projector connected to it, which most places do have it nowadays when you're doing a presentation. To utilize the notes, you click on File, and then you choose Print. And then under Print Type, you'll choose you can print all the slides, the outline, and but what you want is the print notes. Print notes is going to give you a picture of your slide along with, uh, along with the note below it. 
Now the disadvantage here is that um, for each slide in your slideshow, you'll get an actual page for it, and this becomes too much paper in your hands. So in that case, you could consider using the presenter view. Other options for distributing your PowerPoint include sending it as a PDF. So you choose Save and Send, and then you choose to create a PDF or XPS document. It'll convert the whole PowerPoint into, into a PDF file. Of course, it's not going to have the annotations and stuff, but it's still going to have all that you had in that presentation. Another option is that if you're going to present at a conference or somewhere and you want to make sure that your presentation is going to play and you're going to use your a different computer other than your own original computer that you created the PowerPoint, what you can do is that you can uh, save and send it and you can package the presentation for a CD. Packaging a presentation for a CD, it means that it's going to include all the linked or embedded items such as videos, sounds, and fonts, and any other files needed for the package. So this makes it easy if you're using a specific font that's not in that other computer. It's going to collect all these pieces and package them into one file for the CD. Instead of nobody to really use a CDs as much anymore, but uh, what you can do is you can still copy all that stuff into a folder. And um, so you click on copy to a folder. So instead of a CD, you just copy them to a folder. Then I'm going to put them on my desktop. And it's going to be a folder called Presentation CD. I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to say, it says that you chose to package all linked files and all that stuff. You should include all the files in the package. Do you want to include them? You say yes. And um, it's going to capture all those components. And here's the presentation CD, the folder. Now the folder has the actual PowerPoint. Also it has the all the pieces that go with it, including a player, the presentation package. The, the advantage of this is that even if the computer then does not have PowerPoint itself, wherever you're planning to present it, which is kind of rare nowadays, but just in case, you'll still be able to go to presented by simply launching it from that folder that you created earlier. And finally, some miscellaneous items that are across many menus or different options here in PowerPoint. One of the useful tools that you might use from time to time is the screenshot feature. Basically, you can capture different sections or parts of your screen and put it as an image into your slides, into your actual slides. So let's say right here we click on screenshot and screen clipping, and then I go anywhere in my screen here, capture these two, let's say, now notice whatever was on the desktop, it captured it, and now I can format it and change it accordingly. So that's the screen capture option. The other one is the album option. You can create a new album. And the album is basically what it's going to do is it's going to take a whole bunch of pictures that you might have in the folder and create slides for you, one picture per slide. So this comes in very handy where you don't have to really tinker with them to resize them and all that type of thing. So you just tell the computer where the files are. You select all the files that you want to display. And then you just click on Create. Notice it's going to uh, fit them to the slide, where you can choose a different layout. You can browse for a theme, and then click on Create. Notice at this point, the pictures are resized. Another feature that you might use from time to time is under slideshow. And under slideshow is, uh, it's called rehearsed timings. So the rehearsed timings, what that will do is that it will record the slideshow without any 
audio to it at this point unless you are going to embed it as a sound in the background but you can basically go through your slides click on them and it will record the time that you're spending or holding on to that slide in there so notice the timer here this is eight seconds now it starts again now once it's done it's going to ask you do you want to keep the timing so you say yes and if you present this or post it or do something with it if you present it it will go by itself notice this is the seven seconds area And you could configure this so that when you run it, you can make it so that you loop it and press, and it will continuously loop until you press escape. So th that's PowerPoint. There are a lot of options and uh, the best way to learn about it and how to use it is basically by really looking through the different menus, looking through the different options on each one of the tabs on the ribbon and just play with all the functions and tweak it. But the important thing is to do the outline first because as you probably have seen here in our process, you're not thinking quite as much once you get into the colors and into the shapes and into the, the design, you're not thinking about the content and the content of your PowerPoint is the most important thing. So now that we are almost done with our PowerPoint, um, a couple other things. One of it is displaying the slideshow. And to display the slideshow, you click on slideshow and you can present it from the beginning or from the current slide. You can also present it by using the slideshow icon here in the very bottom, or you can press F5. Shift F5 will also start the presentation from whatever point you are in your presentation. So now if you wanted to present it from the beginning, just click on slideshow from the beginning and that will start. One other thing that when you're presenting this presentation, you can also use the pen option to write on the actual slides as you're presenting or annotate. This is, and unfortunately you cannot see at this point in the recording, it's in the bottom left, there's a little red pencil. But you would basically click on it and then you'll be able to pick the pen. Once you pick the pen you can also annotate directly on each slide using the mouse. The way to get to this if you do not know what to press it's also by pressing Control P. So if I do Control P it will enable the pen so that you can write on the screen or mark stuff on the screen and Control A changes it to the arrow so that you can just click using the mouse. Control P, it makes it so it's the pen. P for the pen, A for the arrow. And as you're presenting your PowerPoint to move to previous slides, you can simply press the backspace on the keyboard. That'll be the easiest. Or of course, right click and choose previous or some of the remotes that you might be using while presenting, they might have a back button as well. The easiest is backspace or the left arrow on the keyboard as well. Then to move to the right, or to go ahead of the presentation, you can press the spacebar, the right arrow, or the clicking in the mouse as long as it's not in pen mode. If it is in pen mode, you want to change it to clicking, control A for the arrow. Once you're done with the um, presentation, usually it will ask you, so you'll escape, press escape to exit the presentation. If you want to keep those annotations, you'll click click on keep and those will be embedded into your into your PowerPoint. I would recommend that before you annotate anything on the PowerPoint that you make a copy of your original so you have it without the notes. So I'll click on keep and now those markings will be displayed. So that's how you present the PowerPoint and how you switch to pen mode and utilize different functions. One other key component you might want to use from time to time is using the slide sorter. Notice here in the bottom you click on slide sorter and you can drag and drop the slides as you want and rearrange them accordingly to what your liking is.
there might be times where you as a student might miss class or the instructor might require that you present a project remotely. You might be taking a class via distance learning and you need to present your project remotely. So the easiest way to do this without any additional technology or learning a different program or anything like that is to create a PowerPoint and then annotate it and record the your voice and narrate it and then submit that PowerPoint to your classmates or submit it online. The same thing the faculty or the instructors can do for the students. If you're going to miss class, you could narrate the PowerPoint and then post it for the students online. So here's how you do that. So we have the PowerPoint designed and of course in this case it's how to use PowerPoint but it does not matter. It can be anything. You click on slideshow and then under slideshow you'll click on start recording. You want to start recording from the beginning. Now usually this will ask you for a microphone as well. So your laptop or your computer needs to have a microphone of some sort and then you'll click on start recording. From this point on notice that there will be a recorder. So whatever you say and whatever you click at this point on it's going to be recorded in a sequence. So all the components that are displayed on the screen as you're narrating it, very similar to like we are presenting it live, it's going to be recorded for within that PowerPoint slideshow. So we click on move on from one slide to the other with all the different components. You could also use the pen tool, control P, it enables so that you can annotate on the screen and highlight different components as you are talking through the PowerPoint. And to move from one slide to the other, I'm just pressing the space bar in this case. So the idea is you just go through the PowerPoint as if you're going in a live presentation. And once the PowerPoint is complete, it's going to ask us whether we want to keep the ink annotations. Those are the writing that I did here in red. We'll click on keep. Now we save it, upload it. So it's going to be still a PowerPoint format file. The recipients will receive it. They'll click on slideshow. Then we'll start the slideshow slide to the other with all the different components. You could also use a pen tool and to and to move from one slide to the other I'm just and basically it's all the stuff that I talked about uh, during narrating it the audience can view it. The only thing that they'll need to know is that they need to put it in presentation mode. You, they'll not hear the voice unless they start in presentation mode by either clicking start slideshow here or start slideshow from the beginning or pressing F5. So that's one option to share the PowerPoint with uh, narration for a missed lecture or for a project for a distance learning student. There's one other option that you can do with it is that you can save and send it and then you can send it and publish those slides by creating a video and that will create a WMV file format and the whole thing will be in one single video. Keep in mind that if you do this it's going to take some time for the computer to process all that you have created in your slideshow but it seems like it uh, incorporates all the recorded timings, narrations, laser pointer gestures, includes all the slides and preserves animations, transitions and everything. So it is very powerful and very helpful for you to utilize this for your lectures, for classroom lectures, without having to purchase any additional technology. So to create the video, you just click on File, choose Save and Send, and then Create Video, and Create Video again, and you just give it a file name.